Hi guys, today we have an interesting project to talk about, which is a budget base shaker setup for all four corners of the car. Now, I say budget, it's still costing a little bit, but it's about a quarter of what you would have to pay if you wanted to buy, for example, four buck kickers. Let's have a look to see what we are talking about. So for this project, I've grabbed four of these BST2 Dayton Audio tactile transducers, 25 meters of speaker wire. I won't be using all of our 25 meters, but it's good to have a little bit of spare. I already have a decent soldering iron, so I don't need to get one of those. Some solder, which I already have. Two knob sound USB sound cards and SimHub, which is free software. I've also had to use uh, an assortment of cable ties, nut, nuts, bolts, and washers, but I've just used what I had lying around the house. Now, budget setups always come with some compromises, and this one has a few. The base shakers I'm using are uh, about half as powerful as the that of the butt kicker. Uh, but I haven't really noticed too many problems because I've mounted the base shakers in locations which are quite close to my feet uh, or my backside. So we, we have that. The compromises in terms of the stereo effects are there because they're quite closely um, situated. So there is some kind of cross-pollination between left and right channels, but it's still a reasonable compromise. You have to do some of the hard work yourself with a DIY project. So there's a little bit of soldering involved, a little bit of um, sourcing your own parts, but generally that's not too difficult. And with the software, which is SimHub, uh, it brings these all together quite easily. So I'll, I'll talk you through how to set up SimHub with this um, two sound card setup that I'm going to show you. And uh, let's get tracking with trying to set it up. So the first thing we need to do is to grab some speaker wire. Just split the ends so we can start to look at actually stripping the shielding. I'm just using some standard pliers here and it uh, takes a little bit of maneuvering, but you can get the sheathing off reasonably easily. See here, that's come off cleanly. We do both ends. Now I'm got, not going to uh, twist the ends together just yet because I want to join these with the, the Dayton Audio Base Shaker. So let's unbox a Base Shaker. There's not really a great deal in the box. Actually, they're just Base Shakers and bubble wrap. You can see... Hopefully, if I actually manage to get it on camera, that they have the ends soldered, which is nice, except I'm going to cut that off because I want to extend the cables. And I'm just going to join these with solder and then heat shrink over the top. These are a little tougher to get off, a different, slightly different gauge of um, speaker wire, but eventually it does come off with a bit of elbow grease. Once we've done that, we just get this. I'm just bringing in the helping hand to help with holding the wire. It's more really when I'm soldering it together, just so I don't have to worry about that. Although, because I'm going to twist the strands together, it's not a huge problem. This does make life a little easier. So we twist the wires together and then we simply apply a little solder to the joint. Now we have to do this essentially eight times, twice for each speaker. Once we've done that, we put the heat shrink on that we made sure that we connected on one end of the wire. We put that across the joint and then I'm going to use a heat gun here to shrink that heat shrink onto 
the new solder joint. But if you don't have a heat gun, you could just use a lighter. And the last step for this process is to grab the banana plugs and screw those onto the other bare ends that we've stripped. And it's all you have left to do is to test out your base shakers and make it a lot of noise. I just normally plug it, plug in the knob sounds to my PC, grab the most offensive bass shaking track I can find on YouTube, and then play it for a few seconds just to make sure all is good. Actually, fitting the bass shakers to your rig is pretty much the easy part. So for me, I have a pedal tray which has lots of holes ready drilled so you can uh, place pedals from various manufacturers in place but that is perfect for locating the bass shakers i mean i think you'd get better audio separation if they were to the left and right of your rig but then these aren't very powerful these these are 35 watt bass shakers so i'm not sure how much of the effect you would get from your base shaker if it was in those locations, especially uh, if you have a rig like mine, which is an 8020 uh, rig. For the seat, I have an RS6 GT Omega seat that has a sprung bottom, and in those spring locations, you can put the base shakers in and just zip tie them in place. So that's what I've done there. I didn't zip tie the front base shakers mostly because on testing. After zip tying them, I found that there was too much vibration between the pedal plate and the base shaker rather than that energy being transferred into the pedals themselves. So SimHub installation is fairly easy. Google SimHub. And then go to SimHub-.com. Uh, here you have a little bit of info of what's available to you via SimHub and there's a download link, so click that. And then the big download button for the latest version. We're going to be downloading 7314. It might take a little bit of time for you to get this downloaded. It's a good opportunity to make a cup of tea. So once downloaded, open up that file, uh, extract the file, or you can double click it to open it either way is good so once opened windows defender will basically block you from installing but you can bypass that by clicking more info and then run anyway then agree to the terms and conditions in the installer select all options that you wish to install and just go through the install shield as you would with any other uh, windows installation so if you already have Sim, a version of SimHub installed, it will complain as it does on mine, but it can automatically close that and then it will just install the components for you. Once it's installed, it will request that you restart the computer. Please do that and then we should be good to go into SimHub itself. Once you have SimHub running, it'll be on your system tray. You click that to open it. It will greet you with a bunch of games but you want to go to the base shaker the, the shake it base shakers section and then sound output because we're going to set up our sound cards so what we want to do is select our two sound cards that we have that are both labeled usb devices and then what we need to do is ensure that the front base shakers are doing front left and front right effects uh, with the rear effects disabled and you can see here we've got channels three and four enabled but this is only a two channel sound card so these are irrelevant anyway let's just untick them so we're aware of our settings properly we can test our sound card out make sure everything is okay and all seems to be good so let's go and check our other sound card this is then for our rear effects. 
So effectively we do the same, but we disable our front left and front right effects for channels one and two and make sure that the rear left and right effects are enabled instead. Anything that's labeled all we want on, but anything that's labeled front we want off. Again, you see channels for in four automatically selected. Uh, this is from the custom settings. So what we're using here, we're not using mono, we're not using left or right, front or rear or corners. We're using custom because we're using two separate sound cards to do these effects. That's all good. And then we go to our effects profile. And here you can see what I've got enabled is the ABS active setting, engine vibrations, um, gear shifting, road impact, road vibrations, and we've got different uh, volumes for each of these. So we set those, and this is probably going to be to your personal tastes. So I'm not going to try and dictate what you have on these. But if you open it up, you can then test out the effects. What I found with testing the effects here is that they tend to be a little stronger than what they are in game. So you test them out and then fire up a game that you, you want to play. I haven't really run through the details on how you set up the games. Um, some of them, the telemetry will automatically start playing through um, SimHub. Others, you might have to configure manually. When you open up a game, it will warn you. So if you open up a game and look in SimHub, it will warn you if the telemetry is disabled and usually tell you how to fix it. So uh, this is going to be dependent on your game, so I can't really run through that with you. Some games will be automatically enabled. So we've got quite a few effects enabled here. And these are the ones that I, I like. Um, we also have the ability to control the gain on these effects or mute them, depending on what we want to do. I haven't found any of these, but it's good to be able to do that. Then you can modify it on the fly. And that's really it about um, setting up SimHub. Yeah, so when I first started setting up this uh, bass shaker setup the effects were almost overwhelming there's quite a lot of configuration that you have to do to get it to your liking but once you finish playing around and you've got things exactly as you want them it just adds such a level of immersion to the game You can feel when you are going over curbs, you've got that nice engine rumble. You can feel as you're locking up the front end. And whilst you could do that with a two bass shaker setup, having those effects in stereo gives you just that little bit more immersion that you would have if you were doing this just front and rear or left and right. I could feel there, for example, that I'd locked up and then that the rear end had got loose. Any downside to this kind of setup is the the vibration is still felt through the chassis, uh, which I don't think you'd be able to get rid of anyway. I don't have sound isolators on the, the bottom of this rig right now, and that probably doesn't help much. But I do have to turn down the effects a little bit overnight just so I don't wake up the family. Overall, I'd say I'm very happy with the effect. Considering the, the price point. And like I said, you could easily spend four times as much on just a standard bass shaker set up using um, butt kickers. The Buck Kicker Gamer 2 comes in at pretty much the price I spent on the entire setup. Now, I don't know if you can pick up the vibrations on the microphone, probably not. But it's a little on the noisy side right now because I've got it turned up. I can feel everything that I would expect to feel from the car. And 
and it's really quite enjoyable. Don't even have to be driving hard to enjoy this. Coming into this project, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I'd never experienced uh, base shaker setups before on a Simrig, so I had no gauge. The BST2s are a bit of an unknown quantity in that I've seen reviews for BST1s and they were quite highly recommended, but the BST2, its slightly lower powered cousin, had nothing and it didn't look like anyone had actually tried using them. Maybe people have, they just haven't uh, spoken about it on Reddit or any other um, forum that I could see. So it's a, a little bit of an unknown quantity, but it, putting this all together with the knob sound, it seems to be working pretty well. I've had to use two uh, sound cards to do this, and with the current revision of my BIOS, that can cause me some issues because it tends to drop out on occasion. I've only had it happen once so far in the couple of weeks that I've been using this setup, but yeah, it has happened and a later BIOS is available, which I will try that might sort out that issue. Now, when I talk about the BIOS, this is of my motherboard and not of the sound card itself. This isn't a firmware issue on the sound card. This is a system issue that I, I face personally. So I wouldn't expect anyone else to necessarily come across that particular problem. And that's more something that I can resolve myself. So whilst it is a, a bit of a, a niggly issue that I've got to deal with, it isn't specifically a problem with this um, base shaker setup. The effects are pretty extreme when I put them on a high volume and the stereo separation, as I suspected, doesn't work as well as it could if they were slightly further apart. Uh, it's more of a problem under the seat than it is under the pedals. With the pedals, I, I still get some pretty good separation there. So I'm overall pretty happy with the end result. And it adds such a level of immersion that I would wholeheartedly recommend people looking into this kind of product to definitely dip your toe in. If you're going for something like what I've done, a DIY project where you've got the four corners, then it just feels like you're almost in a vehicle now. It's not quite the same thing. You, you still don't have that inertia that you get from being in a real vehicle, but it's still uh, not a bad effort towards adding that immersion, especially when you're using a VR headset. So yeah, pretty happy with the end result. Now, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've tried something else like this, leave a comment. That would be good to hear from you guys. Uh, if you didn't like this video, please leave a comment because I'd still like to hear what you didn't like about it so I can improve in the future. Uh, if you want to see more of this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.